he gave me. It's spelled A-C-H. Ach. That's all I can... Yeah, I don't know. He'll bring that back later. I don't, I don't know how, but he will. He always does. And below that, below the, the meaning of the number 253, and the word that it stands for being Ach in Hebrew, A-C-H, Ach. He showed me Ezekiel 6, 11, chapter 6, verse 11, and chapters 21, verse 15. And first, he brought me to Ezekiel 6, verse 11. Now, this is the interesting part. It reminded me of Harry Potter. And I don't know if any of you have watched Harry Potter. I, judge me, don't judge me. Yes, I watched Harry Potter because God speaks through everything. He reminded me in this particular verse of when Harry Potter had a book that was um, notated by a previous student, a student who had gone through that class before. This was a potions class. And they were vying for a potion, a, a, a little vial of lucky, uh, uh, lucky drops or lucky oil. I'm hearing horns. Oh, someone's playing music. It's a day of celebration today. Um, anyway, so I'm sitting there and um, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm looking at this and, and then God remembers that, remember that? And I'm like, yeah. And I was reading Ezekiel 6. And no, I'm not in Ezekiel 6 anymore. And it said, smite with your hand and stomp your foot and say, alas, all the evil abominations of the house of Israel shall fall by the, by the sword. And God said, that's a hand gesture. It's not, I didn't say go and smite people, stomp on people. I'm like, I see. I understand. He goes, they took it literal. They started going and killing people. And I was like, what are you, what are you doing? Now you're going to... Hmm, okay. <laughs> he says, a hand gesture because the victory is mine, because the judgment is mine. That's what he said. And I was like, sorry, Father, we, we misunderstood. So, say it with me. Smite, stomp, alas, for the, all the evil abominations of the house of Israel shall fall by the sword, by God's sword. God will vindicate us. God will ensure that we no longer suffer at the hands of Lucifer, at the hands of the evil spirits that are holding us hostage because of our bloodline curses. They're gone. They're done. At least for me, as of right now, the curses over my bloodline have been defeated, have been put down. And I will start to see the fruits of the labor, of the posture I have kept submissive to God leaning into the word of God allowing God to be my voice allowing God to strengthen my steps allowing God to come in and rule in my life and then we go to verse 21 verse 15 or chapter 21 verse 15 God has put the sword against all of their gates so their heart will faint and their ruins will be multiplied. Because they, don't, they did not heed the warnings. They did not heed the words that God put, was putting in their faces. Not by me, but by the people around them. They were trying to call each other off. And 
one girl did not listen. And I was still worried that I was not going to be able to sleep without drinking the wine. But God showed me, he actually allowed me to sleep, not last night, but the night before, without drinking any wine. So going into Resurrection Day, I did not drink. Because I asked God, am I okay not to drink tonight? And he goes, yes, I want you to see that it's over. And I slept the entire night. I did not wake up in pain. I did not wake up holding my legs feeling the, the pain of my bones being crushed and being broken. And so last night, he's like, let's drink. It's a new month. You got to celebrate. I'm like, okay. And this morning he woke me up with joy of new beginnings. The joy of new beginnings. He's like, this is a new you. And I said, yeah, but this body. And he goes, I'm about to change all that too. <laughs> he goes, you're about to start working out. And the time that it's going to take you to get to where you need to be, it's not going to take that long. Those, those. And it's funny because I said, I commented in front of the other girls that when I was younger, that, not when I was younger, that people called me fat. And they looked at me in surprise. And they're like, you're not fat. You have the proportions where women want the proportions to be. You have a small waist. You have a round butt. And you have boobs. And you, they're like, you're not fat. And whoever told you you're fat, they don't know what they're talking about. The same girls who don't like me were the ones who were telling me that whoever told me I was fat, they were wrong. And I was like, okay, um, thank you. <laughs> but God has put the sword against them, against all of their gates. So whatever they put their hands to will not come to fruition. And that is their punishment. Am I rejoicing in that? No. Because no child of God given the opportunity to repent. But God is using this for that. Again, God is using this experience of coming against me to may help them understand that they cannot live life without Him. So these experiences that they're about to have is going to cause them to get to their knees. And the individuals who don't get to their knees who end up passing away with their last breath they are giving one last chance to repent we are going to see the number of deaths pick up because some hardened hearts will not repent until they're taken to the brink of death and when they recognize that they're about to die and where they're about to go that is when their souls re reach out to God. But there are some souls who won't. There are some souls who will not repent in the end. And so God reminded me of the eight that was on the, on the uh, microwave. And I'm like, okay. So I typed in Bible verse 8, and it brought me to Romans 8. And he did not let me go any further than verse 1. No longer is there condemnation in those who follow Christ, for they do not walk by their flesh, but they walk by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit now leads me. Wherever the Holy Spirit says I must go, I will go. Wherever, however the Holy Spirit says I must speak, I will speak. Because the Holy Spirit is wisdom and charity and love and honesty. I speak true words. And it is not my fault. It is not my, 
It is not for me to worry about how another person receives the truth. That is for God to help that individual accept the truth that God is showing them through me. And then, of course, he brought me back to um, Esther, which... And the, he picked me up right where he left me yesterday or, yesterday or the day before yesterday. And it's about the prayer and fasting and teaching God's people how to pray and use prayer as their weapon. You see, until this moment, I didn't realize that every one of us was given the scepter because the scepter is prayer. And if you don't know what a scepter is, the scepter is when the king is, is crowned, okay, he holds a stick in his hand. That is a scepter. That is his um, confirmation that he is the king over the land. And in the other hand, they usually hold like a golden apple, apple of my eye, chosen by God for such a time as this. And in a dream, back in 2020, God gave me the scepter. And I have it written down somewhere. It's in, it's in one of my notebooks. I don't think I wrote the date. I do remember it was summertime, I think. And I was sitting on a throne. And a court appointed person, man, came to me and handed me the scepter and has said, here, my lady, your majesty, the scepter for you to rule with authority and, um, and what's the, when you're, when you're in command, command, commanding or commandment, um, of the things around you. And I was like, okay, thank you, I accept. And so this is what God had me write out about what I read and the notes from the different, um, and you can see, I have it all written down. And yes, he's having me write in red, not in black, for such a time as this. And I did change it because I was writing in black, see? But on December 12th, he had me start writing in red. Anyway, don't know why I needed to show you that, but okay. So this is, this is the summary of all the things that I've read and the understanding of the book of Esther and the Bible. Prayer is the scepter for us that chosen to bring order to God's kingdom. The Holy Spirit will lead us in righteousness to ensure that our prayers will have the authority and the strength that was given to us by our Lord Jesus. God recognizes the Holy Spirit. And I write this in the second one. Using fasting while in prayer prepares us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Only with the feeling of the Holy Spirit will God know who we are. She leads us according to the ways of God, which God knows because she is part of Him. He recognizes His own because the Holy Spirit has allowed herself to be seen by those who truly have the heart of the chosen, the heart of the ones who will bring about the end, the ones who have been mentioned in the 144,000. The leaders, the captains, the lords, who will stand next to our Lord Jesus and bring about the end. For it is the wife of Jesus, the helper, who will choose the warriors from among the people and only those who have the heart posture that God is 
providing the Holy Spirit to be within. Only they will be able to stand with Jesus because they understand that they are not the victory. The victory is God's. The victory is God's because His Son fulfilled prophecy to perfection. He is complete and truth and wise. I had no idea I was going to say any of that. May God shine above you, through you, within you. And as you can see, God is making me less and less. He's taking over the video. Soon it will be only Him. I will be but a voice. A voice in the darkness to shine the light, to bring about the path that God is leading you on. In the name of my Lord Jesus, I pray you surrender your mind, surrender your heart, surrender your posture to God. How do you do that? You humble yourself. You humble yourself before God. You tell Him that you are nothing without Him. That without Him, you cannot exist. And mean it with every part of your being. And give up the blessings. I did. I said, Father, I don't want the blessings. If the blessings are going to take me away from you, I don't want them. Because nothing is worth more than you. Having you in my life is everything to me. And I will not give you up. And I have been wrestling with him, not for the blessings, but for his love, for him to be within me, for him to love me the way I love him. I don't want things, things come and go, money comes and goes. But his love, his endearment, his passion for me will never go away. And that, that is something I can live with. That is something I can die for. That is something I can sacrifice everything I have within me, around me, above me and beneath me for him. For everything comes from him. I am nothing without Him, but in Him I am everything. In the name of my Lord Jesus, I pray that you find Him, that you seek Him, and that you wrestle Him, not for the blessings He gives you, but for Him to give Himself to you. Amen.